Hi, Lane. Thank you so much for being with me today. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited. No, so am I because I deal with new business owners all of the time and they are always wondering, you know, those legal questions and how do we set up that foundation. So I'm just so excited that you're here. And to start, I would love to know a little bit about your story and your journey as a lawyer in this entrepreneurial space. I think it's such an interesting niche for a lawyer to go into. And so I would love to know how that panned out for you, how you started in with this. Definitely, and I would love to share that with you. So I started out as a lawyer in Atlanta. I've actually been an attorney for a lawyer for 25 years. Next. Next month, it will be 26 years, if you can believe Oh my gosh. It. No, I can't. <laughs> so I started out, and my work that I began working with was as a sex crimes prosecutor in a division that is now called Special Victims, but at the time was called Sex Crimes. So all uh, criminal activity where the victims were either children or women, mostly children. And when I finished there, you know, usually after you finish with the DA's office, after a, a period of time, a tour of duty, we like to call it, I went and opened up my own firm defending children's rights. And during those years, I slept never, I ate whatever was on the go, and I carried all of the stress of these really high, high important clients on my shoulders. Mm -hmm. Eventually, I got burned out and I ended up in a health crisis. I ended up in a motorized wheelchair for five years without the use of my arms or legs with what doctors called incurable fatigue. 13 doctors across the United States, Switzerland, Mexico said I would never walk again. Two of them told my husband to prepare for me not being here the next year. Let me give a little spoiler alert. <laughs> last year, last winter I spent in the Andes in Ecuador uh, hiking the Andes in Ecuador. Oh my so, gosh. so spoiler alert, the story has a good ending. So nobody has oh to worry that I'm stuck in that place. But if I hadn't believed that I was going to walk again, if I hadn't believed that I was going to hike again and get to the other side of that, I think I would have accepted that diagnosis and been stuck in that place. So what got me, the question people always want to know is what got me from one side to the other, right? Sitting in a wheelchair to hiking the Andes. And it was a lot of different modalities and different alternative treatments. The biggest needle mover that I found that I'm able to control is food. So I learned during that journey, the power of food as medicine. And after I was healed and walking again, I wanted to tell everyone about the power of food as medicine. So I went back to school and I became certified as a health coach, specializing in helping women entrepreneurs increase their energy so that they didn't get burned out the way that I had. Right? How can we work as women, as entrepreneurs, and serve clients and be big hearted and mission driven, but not get burned out? And that was my specialty. And I earned the nickname um, Energy Magician. And I really loved that. Love and that. I, I loved the work. And I was seeing great results and helping women and on top of the world. And an opportunity to partner with another health coach came along. That's when I made a huge mistake. I entered into the working relationship with her with no written agreement. And she ended up, you can guess, she ended up stealing everything that we had created together and cutting me out. I got completely burned. All of my content, gone. All of my money, gone. And all of my hard work down the drain. And I know, I know, looking back on it, I should have known better. I'm a lawyer for Pete's sake. But I think like most women and most entrepreneurs, I thought we were on the same wavelength. And I thought we were, quote, aligned. And I never imagined that anything like that would happen to me. And at the end of the day, there was nothing that I could do to protect myself because I had nothing in writing. And first I felt shocked. <laughs> of course, it was just such a surprise that that happened. And then for a little bit, I felt angry. And then typical me, I got motivated. And right then and there, I sat down to my computer and I began drafting all of the agreements that I wished that I would have had with her everything that I would have needed to protect myself. And when I was done with that, I started drafting all of the agreements that every entrepreneur needs to protect her business 
and all of her hard work. And that's how I ended up as a lawyer for women entrepreneurs. It was only from my own journey and from experiencing getting burned that I realized how many of us are out there in business without written agreements, without ways to protect ourselves. So I took that, I took that on as my mission and I don't, every woman that I, every woman business owner that I encounter ends up getting protected because it's a no brainer. Yes, absolutely. Oh my gosh, your story blew my mind. Wow. <laughs> How incredible. And I took so much from that. And the main thing I see is like how important strong foundations are like in all areas of our life with our health and legally and how much we we can't skim over that stuff as entrepreneurs because it can lead to such intense health health issues i've i've dealt with i mean not nearly as intense as what you explained but i've i was hospitalized with panic attacks when i started my entrepreneurial journey and um so I, I relate to that on some level and I just like appreciate that journey so much that you've been on. Um, and I love that it's all of these things are connected to you wanting to serve women in this way so that they're protected and strong and able to, to go out and do the things they want to accomplish. Like how beautiful. Yeah. You know, I say when we're in fear, we cannot grow. Mm -hmm. So when we're running a business and we're looking over our shoulders, we're worrying something that we're doing or more likely not doing is going to come back and bite us in the buns. Then we're not able to share our content fully, to raise our prices, to take those visible, to be more visible, to say yes to those bigger opportunities. So my whole mission, if you will, is to help women get out of that fear, to have that confidence and that peace of mind, exactly what you're saying. When you've got those solid foundations, and you've got that really solid base level of your home. If you think about your business like a physical house that you're building and you're, not, you're building it on shaky ground, you're not gonna be able to build it to the top, especially when you're aware that everything in the basement level is not to code, <laughs> that, mm -hmm. that you've used rickety wood, that you haven't actually put studs. I mean, I'm not a home builder, but you haven't actually- <laughs> Sounds legit. <laughs> right, totally right. <laughs> you know what we're talking about here today. <laughs> But when you've got those foundations in place and you know that you're set up from the bottom and you're no longer in fear, then you can move forward with peace of mind and more important with that confidence. And that's what I love to help women get is that confidence that they know that their business is set up properly from the beginning. Yes, I love that. We actually just, um, I just did a coaching call with some VAs last week where we were talking about our mindset as we're going into sales calls and that those little pieces that aren't in place, those come up in our subconscious when we're trying to sell, when we're trying to sell our services and how much not having those pieces in place can really, you know, affect the bottom lines of our business and keep us from moving forward, like you said, because we're in fear of like what will happen because we're not set up with that strong foundation. Right, right, we're like half in, half out. Yes, right. yeah. Just at that point where we're going to enroll a new client and we're going, a new client is just about to say yes to us and we send her our contract and we know that it's like kind of patchwork together mm -hmm. and maybe I got it from this business coach or I got it from my colleague or my cousin and I'm not sure if it really protects me and gosh why is it talking about I'm not a doctor in my contract when I'm a V I'm serving as a VA why is, my why is my contract talking about medical health and diagnosing and why is my contract say this is for entertainment purposes only what am I doing so I think you know when we put out that energy and we're kind of half in half out we're 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 oh, I hope she reads it and I hope she signs up. But at the same time, oh God, I hope she doesn't read this. I hope she doesn't sign up. That, that energy I think can be felt. And that's mm -hmm. not putting out that welcome mat. That's not saying I'm set up and I'm ready. It's this energetic thing. When you know that everything is in order, then you're not worried and you're putting it out there and you, you're able to feel clear as you put it out there. And that's where growth comes from. Absolutely. Yes. I totally agree with everything you're saying. It's so, yeah. so timely for, for a lot of the, com with a lot of the conversations I've been having lately with other VAs. So yeah, I'm so excited. So with all that being said, like, how do we get started? What, what are, what is that strong legal foundation that we need for our business? Can you tell us a little bit of the basics about what we need to do? Yeah, for sure. 
the first thing you need to do in any business is figure out where you are exposed. And exposure is a fancy legal word that you can also substitute the word vulnerable or naked or gonna get in hot water. So we have to figure out where are the places where what I call your legal leaks are draining into your business. Where are those potential pitfalls? And my program is called the legal umbrella and I use the words, the, the letters in the word umbrella to walk my clients through exactly which pieces of their business, which places in their business they could potentially be vulnerable. So that's the place that I like to start. Before we dive into the, how do I get myself set up? The first thing is, what the heck do I even need to do? And you know, there's so many myths around legal. One, a, a great thing to do is just take like 45 seconds and get those myths out of the way. Just clear up those myths. You know, for years I used to ask at the beginning of all of my webinars, what are the legal myths that we have? you know, as a society, as a culture, mm -hmm. as women. And people came up, the best answers are, legal is untrusting, legal is difficult, legal is going to be expensive, legal is gonna be hard to understand. And the most common one that I hear, and I think this is really the, the heart of it, is when we, when we use legal, one person's gonna win and one person's gonna lose, and definitely along the way, someone's gonna get the short end of the stick. Mm -hmm. So if we can get those myths into the space and then out of the way before we even start and we can say, I can show you that legal can be simple, affordable, easy to implement, easy to understand, and perhaps most important, fair and balanced so that you and your clients and everyone that you work with, all your subcontractors, everyone feels like they're treated fairly. And there's this feeling of a beautiful, harmonious relationship and the people that you work with feel like working with you is a win, win, Double win. So <laughs> I think the first thing is to get those myths out of the way. Mm -hmm. The second thing is to talk about where are the key places in your business that you could be vulnerable, that you could be exposed. So let's use the word umbrella and go quickly through the different places where your business might be vulnerable. You, so we're gonna start with the letter U, right? We've got U-M-B-R-E-L-L-A. So you, U is for your unique content. This is your biggest asset in your business. It's your website, your blog articles, your videos, everything that you make, your special techniques that you teach to your clients, your organization systems that you bring that are your special things that you've come up with, your Asana templates or Canva templates, whatever you're bringing to help make your client's business easier, those are your unique techniques and content. And we need to make sure that we protect those. The second U, M, M is for money. You work hard to make your money and the right contracts and agreements are gonna make sure that you keep that money. So money includes refunds, unpaid invoices, chargebacks. I can't tell you how many clients come to me and they've got a backlog of unpaid invoices. This is money, hey, this is money that we've already earned and we haven't collected on. It's just money that's on the table. So you've already done that work and that's not a way to create a sustainable business. So by having policies in place that protect your money, it's there, your money is not gonna get drained out of your account. All right, U, M, B. B is for your brand. This is everything that you've so carefully chosen to call in and attract your ideal customers so that your ideal customers are going to wanna to work with you. It includes your name, your colors, your taglines, your photos. Oh gosh, I just had a client last week whose photo got taken. She shared it with a summit host to be used on that one summit. And then the summit host started using her photo in all of the different endorsements, basically saying that, that this client mm -hmm. was endorsing all of her services. So we've got to protect these things. And the right, of course, the right written contracts are gonna help you protect all of those things because those are your assets. You know, we've heard that the expression, your brand is money in the bank. So we've got to protect it. All right, U, M, B, R, my favorite place. R, R is for relationships. This is the heart of any VA's business. Your client relationships, your uh, subcontractor relationships. So this is everyone that you work with and what we want to do is make sure that the relationship starts out with aligned expectations. 
that's really the biggest way that things go off track when working with others is, um, and you can have a, a misaligned expectations on either side. There can be, you know, one side is thinking, oh, we're going to be talking every single day by email. And the other side is thinking, oh, we're only going, <laughs> I'm only available to you at our weekly Zoom calls. Right. So there's misaligned expectations. And what happens is that leads to disgruntlement and unfortunately sometimes anger. And that's when we see things really start to fall apart. So we want to protect those relationships. That's the heart of your business are the other people you work with. And we've got to protect that. All right. U-M-B-R-E. E E is for e-presence. This is your entire online empire. It, of course, includes your website and every email that you send out, but it also includes all of your social media, your podcast, if you have one, everything that your platform, if you use one, everything that you present online, your free gift. If you give away a free gift of somebody, you know, my top 10 tools for best organization or for my top 10 tools for time management, we have to protect all of these so that we can put it out there with that confidence. U-M-B-R-E, we come to L-L-A and the L-L-A stands for your love life attitude. This to me is the thing that you have to protect above all else. You know, I think the reason why so many of us become entrepreneurs in the first place is so we can be our own boss, so we can be in charge. But we don't realize that there's nobody to pass the buck to. There's no customer service department. There's no collections department to deal with those unpaid invoices. Mm -hmm. It's just us. And if something goes off track and drama and negativity pierce your business, that love life attitude is going to disappear faster than a rabbit in a hat. And you're not going to be having a good time getting to work to face your business every day. And you're not going to be able to give those clients who aren't creating the drama your full attention. So when you have legal leaks, that love life attitude is really vulnerable. And so we've got to protect it. So those are the six key things that we have to look out for to get started to protect in our business. Wow, I love how you broke that down. And you really, really spoke to every problem that ICBAs come up with in their business. <laughs> I mean, everything you said, I was like, I talked, I just talked to a VA about that like a couple of weeks ago. And um, and I especially love how you talked about the relationships with our clients and those communication pieces and Love that breakdown. Thank you so much. I feel like you covered it all. So um, thank you so much for sharing that. And I'm so excited that you are going to be our guest expert in the Support Squad membership community this month. And I wondered if you could tell us a little bit about what we can expect from um, your training with us this month. Definitely. I am going to take a deep dive into the exact legal contracts. There's only seven of them, ladies. The exact <laughs> legal contracts that every VA needs to protect all of those umbrella pieces that we went through. You know, it can be, uh, we can, oh my gosh, there's so many things I have to protect. It's going to get so complicated. Not at all. I'm going to break it down. I'm going to make it super simple, really easy to understand. My secret sauce is after being a lawyer for 25 years is I know that legal can be overwhelming and intimidating for a lot of women. So I make everything really straightforward and easy to understand. And that is exactly what I'm going to do with those seven contracts. We're going to take a deep dive into each one, what it is, why you need it, how you're going to use it and how you're going to get it implemented into your business quickly affordably so that you can move forward with confidence and peace of mind and grow that business that you're dreaming of growing. Yay, that is so exciting. I can't wait to, to hear all that you have to share. Um, and the final question I always like to ask my guests is, can you tell us one thing about yourself that's unrelated to your business? I saw something in your bio that was interesting to me. Um, it says that you're a, a hobby meteorologist or oh, something yeah. like that. Could you tell me a little bit about that? Definitely. <laughs> okay. I, I love weather. I mean, if you can't tell, right, my everything I do is about an umbrella. I mean, yeah. <laughs> this, is a girl, this is a girl who loves weather. So I, we lived, my husband and I are, are full-time nomads. We've been traveling mm -hmm. for the past 19 years, except the years that I was sick, of course. And although I still traveled then to different hospitals, <laughs> different hospitals, oh. that's a different conversation. Right. So 
my, it, my, I think my fascination with weather started when we were living on a boat in the Caribbean. When you're living on a boat, you live by the weather. Mm -hmm. And it really, that time, in order to keep us safe and out of storms, it was up to me. My husband was the captain and I was the first mate. And so anchoring, lines, ropes, navigating, all on my watch, and that included weather. So I became fascinated with reading the sky and understanding what the patterns in the sky meant for the patterns in our week. What did that mean? You know, super, super high clouds, really straight line high clouds means a chill is coming. Some kind of a, a cold weather front is coming, which means we're gonna get some wind. So we better be tucked in somewhere on an island where we're in the lee. That is where it got started that year. I think maybe the next year for my birthday, I asked my parents for an ananometer, which <laughs> It took, me, it took me as long to learn about what it was as how to pronounce it. It's a wind gauge. It's a weather tool that tells you all about different things about the wind. And I, I just became fascinated by it. And then I started gobbling up all the different books that I could on learning more about the weather. And that's how one of the major criteria how we choose houses to live in. We move about every three months, different countries. Of course, now we're in the US, but mm -hmm. different countries, different places. And I choose the house depending on how much of the sky I'm going to be able to read. If I can't see the sky, like an apartment with a balcony is going to be a no-go for me. Because if I can't see the sky, I just don't feel connected <laughs> to what's happening. And so, I mean, I get fascinated by things like supercell micronic uh, thunderstorms. I mm -hmm. love these things. I get like, right now we're in hurricane season and I'm yes. just like, the weather channel is the main channel on at our house. So that is, that's, <laughs> that's my thing. And when you get to know me, it's not just umbrellas. I mean, I'm talking about you know, legal thunderstorms coming right. by ruining, ruining <laughs> the party for everyone. So, you know, we don't want, we don't want the rain to ruin this parade, you know, all, right. kinds, of, all kinds of fun stuff. Yeah. Well, I'm noticing a comment right hearing you talk about that. I'm like, you took all of these things that could be scary, but you have found a way to like tame it so that it's like not scary anymore so like your health crisis and then like legal scary stuff and then like storms that could potentially be scary and like if we're armed with information we can tackle anything right totally. so <laughs> totally. I, love that. I love that right uh, yeah so that was thank you for sharing that that was so cool i saw that in your bio and i was like i have to know what she what she's talking about there. So <laughs> thank you for telling me about that. And then I'm sure all of my listeners are dying to know how do we get in contact with you? How can we work with you? Um, yeah, what do you have for us? What are the best ways to get in touch? Definitely, definitely. Okay, so for people who have listened to the podcast and who are ready to dive in, the next best step, if you know that you don't have your legal house in order and you want to get your umbrella so that you don't get stuck in the, caught in the rain, <laughs> the, the next thing to do is to book a call with me. It's a free call. It's You go to bookwithlane.com. Of course, my name has a Y in it. Somebody recently said, because why wouldn't you want to work with her? <laughs> 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 bookwithlane.com, L-A-Y-N-E. I think we'll have the, the link in the show notes. Oh, yes. We'll have everything at the support squad.com. Super, super. And yeah. for people who aren't quite ready and who just want to get a the next step, the very next step would be to download my legal checklist. And that's going to tell you all the key pieces that you need to protect in your business, a little bit of what it is and a little bit of why you're doing it. Again, just like you said, when we can understand things, they become less scary, mm -hmm. right? And when we can be approach things with a little bit of an attitude of curiosity, and open heartedness and just let me go check out what this is about, then it's not scary. So th this is a written checklist of everything that you need to protect your business, to take all of the stress out of it. And it's just super simple. And at the end of that, there'll be an invitation to work, to book a call and work with me. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. I am so excited for you to um, be our guest expert this month. I'm excited to see your training and, and learn even more from you. So thank you so much, Lane. Thank you so, so much. This yeah. was absolutely my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>